my start actually begins with music. Like I have always loved music. I was that teenage girl that had all the photos from Tiger Beat magazine or whatever hanging on my walls. And then in high school, I joined the yearbook class. And so that was the first time I ever shot a roll of black and white film and they had us develop it and I got to print it. And uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't very good, but it was just really cool to see photography. And in, and in high school, I was managing a band and then the band asked me, no, the band said we need photos. So I started calling around and asking all these photographers, you know, hey, can you do the band photos? And, and they were so expensive that I said to the guys, I said, hey guys, I I could buy a camera for the amount that these guys are going to charge for uh, the session. And they said, go for it. So I went out and bought a camera, DSLR. And then I, and then, so I started, I took picture, I took their pictures and then they're like, oh my gosh, these are so great. And I said, you guys are just saying that because you didn't have to pay for them. And so that's kind of how I got started in high school for sure. And actually I had a really defining moment when I went to the Tom Petty concert with my friend and we went out and we bought these Tom Petty hats, these like straw hats. And so I, I get, we get to the venue and I'm like, I, I put my camera over, you know, over my shirt, under my shirt. And I put my lens in my sock and I sneak my camera in and we make our way all the way up to the third row. And, and well, third, everyone's standing like three people back and, and Tom Petty's singing and I put my camera together and I'm taking these pictures and and all of a sudden I, I look through my lens and like Tom Petty's looking at me through my lens at me and I'm like oh my gosh and it was such a moment and I'll always remember it and then I realized I can marry music and photography which were both my passions and and then I and then I went and got my commercial photography degree and so I moved to Hollywood and uh, it was right when Guns N' Roses were blowing up it was the early late 80s and I saw an ad at the, bre at the brewery, which is where we're at today. And so I went walking into this guy's studio and he had a picture of Annie Leibovitz on the wall. And I am like, what the fuck? And he said, yeah, Annie's his friend. I said, done, I am renting your space. <laughs> and then I just started shooting bands and um, I got a call to uh, go do Faith No More. Uh, promo pictures for the album The Real Thing and I said you guys I can't do any photos until I hear the music and they go well great they're recording it so go up to the studio so I went out went up to their studio and I hung out with them for three days and the next thing you know I'm taking their pictures for the album The Real Thing which is mind-blowing great and and I shot right here at the brewery so the thing is, is I loved LA. It had a lot to offer me. And I mean, I was doing a lot of bands, like I did Billy Sheen and all these other bands while I was here. But I was like, hey, <laughs> this, this LA thing, I'm gonna move back to Seattle. So I get back to Seattle and that's right when the grunge movement is exploding. So I got I got a studio, it's the early 90s. And I just, and, and all of a sudden my phone just starts ringing and they're like, Karen, we just got signed, can you take our pictures? Karen, we just got signed, can you take our pictures? And it was like all these bands were getting signed, it was just like dominoes. Just like every, everybody was getting signed. It was, it, we were having the time of our lives. It was, it was the best thing ever. It was the early 90s and um, I got a call from Rolling Stone and they wanted to do, uh, they wanted me to do the New Faces photo for Alice in Chains. So they come walking in with their layered look and their combat boots and their disheveled hair. And uh, truthfully, I was probably wearing the exact same thing. And so we go out and we shoot in the service elevator and Jerry calls me and wants, and he said, Karen, can you just do a session of me? And I was like, sure, man, come on down. And so I kind of wanted to make it just look really ethereal. And uh, so I shot him on white and he had this beautiful long blonde hair and we did this whole session and uh you know believe me <laughs> girls love those photos so this photo of lane staley was taken at the paramount in seattle and uh, i love i love the stars on his pants he always would paint his clothes which was fantastic and i don't know if you guys ever got to see lane sing but that guy when he sings he sings from his like being, like his whole body vibrates, you know, and he's just, he is just going. And he loved the stage. I mean, that that is where that is where he shines, you know. And actually, Alice in Chains is my most photographed band. I, I saw more shows of Alice and I did more shoots of Alice than any other band. And um, yeah, I mean, that, that four pack, 
amazing. Yeah, so I painted this backdrop, tie-dye. It took a long time, but I tie-dyed a backdrop. I had this little red wagon, and we had these, uh, I just let the guys pick whatever they wanted. You know, I just had all these props out, and then they all got in the wagon. I mean, there's a bunch of shots from that session, and they are just goofing off. And, you know, like what the charisma between that particular band was just solid. So that's Grunt Truck, and... I love Grunt Truck. I mean, they were the most, uh, they were one of our favorite bands. Like, all the bands love Grunt Truck. So they would tour, and all the, and everyone would go out to try to buy their albums, and the Roadrunner record just couldn't keep up with the demand. So they would, so people just didn't buy the album after they got there, and so they lost a lot of inertia because of that. So Ben, the singer of the band, he lived at this apartment and it was, well, it was kind of like an artist commune. And so there were, uh, so all these people were making art. So someone had made this fence and I'm like, you guys just go over there behind that fence. I mean, it's just gorgeous. And, uh, and so, yeah, so I, I just was like, okay. And then I, I just moved everybody in, you know, in a right position. So uh, Nirvana, you know, they were on the scene very early as well. This was like, um, 91 um and they had gone on tour and we and this is right when you know uh never mind was blowing up and i was supposed to do their a photo session with them that day in seattle so they were going to play the paramount so i drive down there and um and they're like oh deep girl's sick and so then anyways i had had my seamstress make these santa hats i gave one to kurt and one to chris and so i they put them on and we were in, in the dressing room and they were just being really playful with the hats because it actually was Halloween night. And so, so they were having fun with the hats. That night at the Paramount, it was the only night that, it was the only time Nirvana ever recorded an HD video. It's the only one. And so um, normally they don't let photographers shoot, but they said I could shoot. <laughs> Next thing you know, I'm up there and I'm shooting. And, and the greatest thing is, is when you look at the photos, one of the beauty of the photos is that they put so much light on Dave Grohl that I actually, the, the drummers actually illuminated, <laughs> which isn't always the case, especially in the 90s when we didn't have lights everywhere. So um, yeah, so that's how I got to shoot Nirvana at the Paramount. That photo of Kurt Cobain is called Alone in the Fame. And it's the greatness and the loneliness of Kurt. And I tell you, I don't know, but I've never shot a picture like that before or after. And I was, just, I was standing there side stage and I was like, oh, I just saw it. I was like, holy shit, this is the shot. And I just took it. And there's, there's way too much dead space. <laughs> I mean, but it doesn't matter. It, it, it is just a vibe and a mood. And I don't, it, it, it actually moves me, truthfully, <laughs> still to this day. The most beautiful thing about Kurt Cobain is that he was so big hearted. He was a lover. And I mean, he was just literally such a beautiful person. And, um, you know, Kurt Cobain was a total feminist. And not only did he want to empower women, you know, and support women, but he did. And, you know, the thing about the, that picture of them in the Santa hats, um, I, I framed those photos. And so then, I don't know, a couple months later, I get a call from DGC and they go, I got, we got this picture of Kurt Cobain in a Santa hat. I said, how did you get that? And he goes, Kurt mailed it to us. And I was like, what? And he, they go, yeah, he wants to, it's his favorite photo. And he wants to put on an utero. And I'm like, oh my gosh, yes. So that picture ends up on an utero. And then, and then later, the picture of Kurt Cobain, right here, smiling, uh, smirking at me, was, uh, you know, two years later, they had gone on the world tour and they came back and they're hanging out with the butthole surfers. So I'm taking pictures and then the record guy's there and he's like, oh, can you do some press photos? So I'm taking a picture of Kurt Cobain and, and Paul Leary and, and Kurt's there, he's like, oh, you know, Kurt Cobain. And I'm like, Kurt, can you smile? And he goes, you always say that. And that's why he's not smiling, he's smirking. Because he knew I got him. So that's, that's a genuine smile to me. You want to hear a crazy story? Four guys walk into my studio. Maybe you know them. They're Soundgarden. <laughs> Chris Cornell comes walking in wearing a Pearl Jam shirt. I am like, Chris, you really shouldn't wear an unsigned band's t-shirt because when it gets in, when these pictures are in Rolling Stone, no one's going to know who they are. And Chris is like, Karen, they're my friends and I want to help them out. I said, okay, half the shoot. So then later, this is my studio, and he gets up in my windowsill, and he, and he just does the Jesus Christ pose. 
in my windowsill. And I didn't ask him to do it, and I, I didn't even know they had a song called Jesus Christ Pose. And so he's up there in my, in my window, and I'm like, okay, click, 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 three frames. Three frames. If you ever saw Chris Cornell live, uh, unbelievable. I mean, that guy's voice, it is one of those soulful, angelic voices. I mean, and talk about heavy. <laughs> that band, I swear, I mean, oh, I don't know. I thought they were kind of metal, man. They were so freaking hard. And, and they were just like, da 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 And we would just rock out. I actually took the first photos uh, when Ben joined the band. I have the original photos. And uh, I drove to Portland and took pictures of them. And then, and then later they came to my studio, uh, you know, and I did those other shots. And then, um, but Chris Cornell, what an entertainer. The minute I heard Creep on the radio, I was like, holy shit, I'm shooting this band. I fell in love the minute I heard their song. And so, they, you know, they're on tour and they came and they played Rock Candy. I called the, um, I called the record guy, I said, dude, I gotta shoot this band. He's like, come on down during the day. And so I'm down there and I set up my lights and you know, this is when we're all gelling, you know, so I gelled them orange and the sky's blue and we're shooting in the alley. And I'm like, okay, chin up, chin down. And so I, I took these pictures and it ended up only, it ended up being their second photo session ever. And then they ended up putting that photo on Creep. This is a European, it's, it's a limited edition European Radiohead for creep. Look at this. I mean, this is what I'm talking about. It was the orange and the blue, and this is the shot that's in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I always have to listen to the music before I do the photo shoot. Literally, otherwise, otherwise I don't know what to shoot. Like, I, it comes to me, and I don't ever want to take the same picture of a different band. And I didn't want to take the same picture. Like, even if I shot Radiohead again, I wouldn't take the same picture. And so it just comes to me through the lyrics and through the music. Funny thing about Pearl Jam is I went to the premiere of the Pearl Jam 20 movie, and Eddie Vedder is standing in his hallway and he's like, oh, here's a picture of my third concert. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, what? I got your first concert. I knew I had the first concert. I just didn't know how rare they were. So I ended up calling Kelly Curtis and I said, Kelly, hey, I got pictures from Pearl Jam's first concert. He's like, no way. He goes, there are no known photos of Pearl Jam's first concert. He goes, bring them over. <laughs> so I go over to his office and he, and he looks at him. He's like, oh my God, these are amazing. So then um, the story about Pearl Jam's first concert was three days before the show, Jeff Ament calls me. He's like, Karen, I got this new band. You should come out. We're going to play the off ramp. I said, oh, okay. And so I called some friends. And I mean, so I get there and there, there's only a couple hundred people at this show. And um, so I get there and everyone's still kind of somber because... Andrew had passed, and, we're, and all I could think of is, man, I hope your new singer doesn't suck, because I can't tell you that, because it's just, you know, it'd just be too much. All of a sudden, Eddie comes out, and he starts singing, and then he sings, you know, he sings alive, and he sings once, and he sings black, in that order, and then you're like, what the fuck? You're like, mind blown. You're just mind blown. Not, and, 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 and you're just like, Wow, and you're like, this guy can sing. And oh, I was gonna say the thing about the Pearl Jam first concert is I only shot one roll of film. When we say starving artists, we are not kidding. You know, the greatest thing about taking photos is, um, is no one else, nobody else will take your same photo. Really, it's your point of view. You know, it's where I put the camera, it's what, it's where I light, it's, it's what, it's that connection between me and that artist, you know. It literally is a dream job, and like I said, it's, no, it's not even a job for me. Like, I love it. You know, my friends would say all the time, Karen has her camera with her everywhere she goes. And so, you know, it's, it's just, now it's just part of my DNA. I mean, like, even just talking, I can see photos, you know, it just, it just comes to you, you know. And, and like I said, I mean, I'm just looking for beauty or what is it about today that's going on, you know? Um, or, or what is it about this album or whatever it is? And I just wanna capture that and save it and share it and let you enjoy it and let, let the fans, you know, enjoy it and let them live, you know, what I see, what I saw. I don't wanna just take a photo. I wanna capture them and, that's, and that is my claim to fame. Is I, want, I want capture, I don't want photo. And when I capture and you get that person and that person, you know what that person says? I love this, that's, that's what I want.